Today's episode of Techzilla is sponsored by GoDaddy.com, Adagio Tees, and Netflix.com. Coming up in today's show, we're going to go deep inside Macworld, the last Apple-sponsored Macworld. No Steve Jobs at the keynote, and well, let's see what actually shows up on the show floor. Coming up on this episode of Techzilla. Welcome to Techzilla. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. You got to go see the keynote. I did. You didn't get your badge. I felt so bad Actually, for you. Actually, no, no, no. I got a badge. Roger and I were denied access. You and Serafina got access. Yes. Apparently, they just wanted to avoid the whole sausage festival aspect. <laughs> Can <laughs> we say that on this show? as many girls as they possibly could. Well, it was a pretty good keynote. I mean, we had uh, Phil uh, mm -hmm. Schiller. He did a pretty good presentation. You were pleased. It wasn't Steve Noteness, but you know, I hardly consider myself an Apple fan girl the way I used to. Too. So I was I was accepting of this new uh, keynote style. Do you think anything? I mean, what was your pick? Because nobody was like, oh my god, there were there there was were no amazing products or announcements for sure. Um, I think my favorite thing was definitely the iPhoto updates for really? iPhone 9. Yeah, they've got the uh, faces and places, which are a few new features. Faces does facial recognition within your photos, which is pretty cool mm -hmm. if you want to organize by people. And places will actually use geotagging information from a GPS-enabled camera to uh, find out where your pictures were taken and organize them that way. Interesting. I was obsessed not so much with the 17-inch MacBook because I don't like carrying around school lunch trays, but the battery inside the 17-inch MacBook. Right. We got a pause on it down at the show floor. It is svelte, it is nice, it has the same sort of aluminum action going on as the new MacBooks, but the battery technology is amazing. I just want to see if anybody's going to buy a notebook that doesn't have a replaceable battery. Right, you can't pop that puppy out this time. They're claiming eight hours of battery life, a Three thousand hours recharges, more than usual, right. uh, and, they, and, and possibly even more exciting than the battery is they're offering a $50 option for a matte finish on the screen. Oh, come on, $50 extra? Like, shouldn't that just be a given? Like, shouldn't you just be able to say you want? Want it yes matte or, glossy. or no? That's so dumb. I, I do not buy the fifty dollar matte finish situation at all. There actually was one major, kind of almost yes. out of the blue, except for some teasing this morning. DRM is going away from the iTunes music. Yeah, it's actually a really good thing. I mean, they're going to have eight million tracks really soon that are going to be DRM free, and then ten million by the end of the quarter. Supposedly, the entire catalog. We're not going to know until we see right. what tracks remain. Maybe some tracks we go get away. Anyone to answer a question for us on the show floor? Right. No one could really figure the whole thing out, but we'll know by the time the show comes out, I'm sure. Yeah, in which case, email us. We'll talk about it more then. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy, and of course, if you already own a bunch of DRM Lockdown iTunes mm -hmm. music, you get to buy it a second time if you want it DRM free. That's true. And also, they're going to have three different tiers of pricing, 69 cents, 99 cents, and a buck 29. Who knows how they're going to figure that one out either, but well, there will be options. We'll talk about that in a couple weeks, and maybe, I don't know, I don't know, if do we dare talk about how to unlock your locked iTunes music? Later. We'll talk about that later. We'll do an episode on that. Let's cut uh, well to a quick commercial break. Actually, before that, let's show you some of the cool stuff we saw on the show floor. Well, it's a little bit of a downer, but this is actually Apple's last year here at Macworld. So we thought it would be fitting to take a look at some of our favorite things that they talked about at the keynote today. I've spent thousands of hours with this man's work. He's a product manager for Kenjin. Bill's going to show us off the new Slim Blade trackball, which is, is it replacing or it augmenting it's the augmenting. expert mouse? Okay. Augmenting the expert mouse. Can you show us off the new trackball? Yeah. Of course. Right. The, the biggest innovation is the fact that we have added an extra sensor under the ball so that rotating the ball scrolls up and down. It's under the mechanical scroll rate of the expert mouse. It's all built into the ball itself. Your fingers never have to leave the ball. I like that thought. There are some added functionality on the upper buttons. There's a media mode, which will adjust volume level, play, pause, next track, previous track, and so on, with the media player with iTunes in the background, so it doesn't interrupt your work. And then there's a view mode, which does panning and zooming. So it shifts the walls, and now it's panning. Zooming around, and 
back to first What's Very cool. What's the pricing going to be? This is $129.99. And when's it shipping? It's available end of February, 1st of March. And does it have like little locking ears? Is that what that's for? It, it does. It's, uh, there's a little magnet, and, and if you look at the, the desktop set, they, all the pieces kind of fit together. Oh, so it plugs into the keyboard. Yeah. Yes. That's so cool. Bill, thanks so much. You bet. Thanks. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, GoDaddy.com. Web hosting starting at less than $5 a month, people. GoDaddy.com includes 99.9% .9 uptime, free 24-7 support, and free access to the GoDaddy hosting connection, the place to quickly install over 50 free applications like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, OS Commerce, and quite a few more. You want to get a discount? Of course you do. Enter in code TECH2, that's T-E-K-2 when you check out. You'll score your domain name for $7.49. Yes, I said $7.49. Some restrictions apply. See GoDaddy.com for details. Do us a favor here at Techzilla. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com and use that code TECH2. Please support us by supporting our sponsors. We're here at the Shore booth at Macworld taking a look at the SE-115s, which is their new consumer level model that's coming out in March of this year. They've got dynamic speakers built in, which give them a nice low end. So they sound really good when you're listening to your iPod or your iPhone, which they actually have special attachments that you can buy. So you can start and stop your music just by pushing the button, which is a nice feature to have. It comes with a three-foot extender cable, so if you have your iPhone or iPod in your pocket, you don't have to, you know, keep pulling it out and messing it up with all the cables and wires everywhere. They're just a nice set to have on hand. And like I said, they're going to be $99, and they're coming out in March of this year. If you do a lot of recording at home, Shure has a few new microphones out that might be of interest to you. This one's a general purpose microphone, and this one is for uh, vocals in particular, you know, for podcasting or singing, that kind of thing. They're all coming out in spring of this year, but this little guy is a really cool one. If you already have a great microphone at home that you want to use, this will convert it from XLR to USB, so you can just plug it into your Mac and go. This is going to be $129, this is $249, and this is $199. Like I said, all coming out in spring. One of the perennial favorites at Macworld is Roxio, and they actually have a new product unlike everyone else. Toast 10, <laughs> we had one of their demo mavens show off some of their favorite new features. So my name is Pat Nugent, I'm the product manager for Roxio Toast, and we are showing off the brand new Toast 10 Titanium that we launched here at Macworld, Toast 10 and Toast 10 Titanium Pro. So one of the really cool new features in uh, Toast is web video, which lets you go to a just about any video streaming, flash-based video streaming site, and actually bring that video onto your Mac and send it up to your iPod or go ahead and burn it to DVD. So part of Toast 10 Pro, something brand new we did for this release, uh, Toast 10 Pro includes the high-def Blu-ray plugin, which lets you author Blu-ray video and includes in the same package a uh, number of other apps you might have heard of, Photo Magico, Sound Soap from Bias, Light Zone, and Sonic Fire Pro. So if you don't have a Blu-ray player, but you want to go ahead and you want to burn high definition video, maybe it's from your TiVo DVR, maybe it's from your ABC HD camcorder, you simply go to our media browser here, you drag in you know, what you want to burn, of course it's a nice big high def file, and even though you're in a Blu-ray project, you choose to go ahead and burn it to DVD. And what that does is it lets you fit 25 minutes to half an hour of high-def video on a single DVD disc, which is very, very cool. So, audiobook. Make it really simple in Toast 10 to import audiobooks onto your Mac. It'll actually, you go into an audiobook project, and you'll see the audiobooks listed here. It'll automatically identify the name the chapters and in uh, one click it'll prompt you whether you want to take all of these multiple CD audiobooks and convert them into one large file or keep them as separate files. It'll name them, it'll bookmark them so of course on your iPod you can stop and start at an exact point in the book and go ahead and burn it later. Well thanks to Patrick for showing off some of those new features. I think it's time we walk around and check out some of the other stuff that may or may not be new this year. <laughs> This handy little device is called the Tune Blocker for iPhone and iPods, and it does something very simple but very useful. You can flip this switch on and off, and then when you plug in your iPhone or iPod to charge, it can either decide whether it wants to sync or not just with the switch. Yes, you can do that you know, through iTunes as well, but this is nice if you just once in a while don't want it to charge. So, Tune Blocker, handy to have. 
this is the e-nook at the charging station. It's especially good if you have a limited amount of space to work with in your apartment or house. And all you have to do is install it into the wall, and then you pull it down. And you can buy different modules to put in here as well. But it's just a nice little workstation where you can use your laptop uh, in a standing or with a higher chair. And uh, they're pretty nice. They have a few different finishes. They have a white one. They have kind of a tiki looking one. And this, I guess, would be kind of a birch or an unfinished style wood. I don't know. It's not real. It's not real wood. I feel like a workstation has the ultimate just building in height. Uh, Anthro's Elevate Wrap, $1,099, but it's motorized. Hey, I'm trying to work here. We'll have to stand up now. Oh. It's good for you. My feet are tired. Oh, poor boo. All right, we'll put it back down there. I love this thing. One of my favorite parts about Macworld is the uh, lovely array of laptop bags, which is one of my favorite things. I know that's so girly. I know, don't judge me. But uh, this is a lovely houndstooth, which is one of my favorite patterns. And I just wanted to show it off a little bit. And I also made a little song. It goes, bag, bag, bags. I like bags. Houndstooth bags. I, that's it. That's all I got. So here we have a MacBook, of course, it's not the new 17-inch MacBook Pro, unfortunately, but we can show you some of the new updates to uh, iLife 09. For example, here we have iPhoto, and one of the main things is faces. It now has a face recognition software built into iPhoto, so you can actually organize by people's faces. And then as you scroll over their faces, you can actually pick which one you want to be uh, the default photo that shows up by hitting space bar. Then when you scroll away, there it is. So there's other cool stuff that you can do. So if we go to a bunch of photos of people and we uh, highlight certain ones, we can then make an automatic album um, of the people that were found in that photo from then on. So let's see if we can figure out how to name someone. Let's name this guy. His name's Tommy. They already did that. So now we can click on that if we want to change his name or add a last name. And then you can go back into Faces and find him wherever he may be. And there he is, right there in the corner there. And you can also find other photos that may be Tommy that aren't already tagged. And then we also have Places, which is another cool uh, geotagging feature that they've built into iPhoto. So you can organize your photos by the location that the photo was taken in. So if you have a camera that can actually use uh, geotagging functionality and GPS built in, it will automatically organize all those by the place that you took the photo in, which is really good if you're organizing like albums based on trips or things that you've done on a road trip. You can scroll and it has uh, Google Maps functionality built right in there. So it's another little partnership between Google and Apple. We've been seeing a lot of that these days. There's also um, Facebook and Flickr integration built right into iPhoto now, which is really nice. And you can sync your faces and your friends on Facebook so it will find people and figure out who it is based on who your friends on Facebook are. That's a little creepy, but you know, that's the way of the future. We've also seen an update to iMovie, which I'm actually really happy about because I wasn't a huge fan of iMovie 08, but a lot of really nice advanced editing features in iMovie 09. Um, there's things like you can drag parts of a clip in and just use the audio from that clip on top of other video that's already existing. They've got really nice transitions. Another feature that I'm happy about is the image stabilization, which is really nice if you're, you know, at a trade show like this and your camera gets a little bit on the shaky side, it'll fix that for you automatically. So all that unused footage that you may not have been able to use, you can now put into your video. We also saw updates to iWork, which is, uh, you know, not one of the more exciting things that we saw at the keynote, but definitely still good for people who use it all the time. And more with the whole Google Maps integration that they're building into this version of iLife they've got these maps. So what you can do is you can drag a globe into your timeline and then you enter in your start location. So we can say San Francisco right here and then choose an end location. Let's do um, Tokyo. And then you can see it as we travel from San Francisco all the way to Tokyo. So this is a fun feature to add if you're doing a lot of traveling within your video. The slideshows have also seen a huge improvement. Now they've got all sorts of really cool templates and graphics that you can use, but the best part is that you can put them on your iPhone or your iPod Touch so you can flip right through your slideshows right there and not have to lug your laptop around if you want to show people your vacation footage. Hello. My name is Veronica. You watched my show, Prepare to Die. It's time now for our Netflix-sponsored movie pick of the week, and this week, it's The Princess Bride.
This beloved 80s classic stars Carrie Elwes and Robin Wright as the two star-crossed lovers who have to overcome ridiculous obstacles, such as rodents of unusual size and the pit of despair. This laugh-out-loud adventure flick is Rob Reiner's premier fantasy adventure movie. So put it in your Netflix queue today. And don't forget to check out the other 90,000 titles they have to offer, including a wide selection of Blu-ray. You're bound to find something you're looking for. And with 40 shipping centers across the country, almost all deliveries happen in just one business day. Netflix plans start at $4.99, but as a TechSoul viewer, you can get a no-risk two-week free trial by going to www.netflix.com slash Support us by supporting them. I've been walking around all day, so I thought I'd take a load off, and I'm now I'm using the uh, back prescription, which is basically just a series of straps that's uh, holding my lower back straight, and all my weight is on the front of my legs by my knees here, so you have to put very little effort into it, and it's actually pretty comfortable. I think I would like this for sitting around the office. Compliance foam earbuds, pretty interesting idea. They cut the noise out great. It's only 29 decibels of attenuation. My beloved Anamotics, actually 37 dBs of attenuation and a considerably cleaner audio response. Great job of actually blocking out external noise, but you know what? The foam that does such a great job of blocking out external noise and complies earplugs doesn't do such a good job of letting through audio in, especially at the high end. So I tried a couple different sizes of the tips and they sounded better with the smaller tips, maybe the bigger tips were squished in my ear canal, but I really want more audio response for 80 bucks. Not a bad deal, a great deal if you're more interested in shutting out outside noise and you are in sort of the ultimate audio quality. So this is the MyView Crystal, and uh, we've seen these before in the past, especially at CES last year, they had a pretty big presence in one of the halls, and uh, they're doing a refresh of all of these come spring, but this one has a 640 by 480 uh, resolution, and it appears to be like a 42 inch screen, so we should be seeing a little bit of an improvement on that come springtime. They're a pretty interesting product, I mean, there's a little chance of getting a headache after you've been looking into these for a bit too long, especially if you've been wearing glasses, as Roger told me previously, but it's a cool idea, it feels very virtual reality, especially good for long uh, plane rides and that kind of thing. This is Andreas from Axiotron, and you guys have a few new announcements coming out for this Macworld, including one that I'm very excited about, the Modbook Pro that I'm yeah. looking at right here. Yes. So I have a few questions about it. Um, for one, I've noticed you've put a matte screen on there, which is nice. Yeah. One of the biggest complaints about the MacBook Pros are the, you know, extra super glossy finish yeah. that they've got. I know, as you know, Sikthor, our marketing director, he's a photographer in his other life, mm -hmm. and he's complaining about the glossy screen a lot, so there's just no way I could put a glossy screen on this device and uh, survive a day in the office. <laughs> and also you've got uh, some, you can actually control the uh, computer now or soon yes. with your fingers as opposed to just using the pen. Yes, we add, we introduced a new technology, Synergy Touch, which is new from what everybody else does because all the tablet PC industry is doing is trying to figure out if you want to touch the screen mm -hmm. or use the pen. My main question though is I'm left-handed, so if I'm writing on this thing, there's a good <laughs> chance that the side of my hand is going to be in contact with the screen while the pen is also. Does that mean, is it going to be able to tell when I'm accidentally touching the screen? The device actually has a setting for left-handed people and right-handed people. <laughs> oh, no way. which it switches the layout from one side to the other. So you can do on this side whatever you want. As long as you're not actually interacting with the on-screen controls, mm -hmm. the system is not going to respond to the touch. We introduced the quick script, which is the part where Steve Wozniak actually is coming in. He's a, he's a former Mac uh, Newton uh, enthusiast like I am. I actually run the Newton business unit for Apple in Europe for a while. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a, it's a well-known secret. <laughs> Not so secret anymore, is it? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> well, it didn't end well for the Newton with an Apple, but there were some aspects of the Newton that I really loved. And so when Steve got his first mod book, the first thing he did, he was writing, you know, meet Andreas at Cocos, and he made a long face because the device, um, the handwriting recognition that Apple built in didn't work very well. Mm. So I showed him QuickScript, which is our handwriting recognition that uh, works in 21 languages and works really well. And so he did it again, meet Andreas at uh, Cocos. Now the text was recognized, but the computer yeah. didn't understand it. He made another long face because he wanted to see the iCalc popping up and have an email sent to me with him, writing me and so on. And so we started working on what we call the Copernicus engine, which is an artificial intelligence. And I can give you a little demonstration what I'm supposed to do. So, um, <clears throat> the, the standard thing would be to write some simple text like play chess. And I get play chess right here. 
Well, that is recognizing it, not understanding it. I actually want to play chess, so I say chess, and oh, he opens wow. up my chess application. So, can I try one? And I just is opening. So, when should we expect to see the Modbook Pro coming out? We'll see this in May, June 2009. Excellent. And all this functionality? Quick script is going to be available for download for all Modbook users um, January 14, 2009. And version 1 is going to be available for purchase um, May 2009. And $99 for everyone who doesn't have a Modbook. So if you have a Modbook, you get the software as a free download. If you don't have one, 99 bucks. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for Looks asking. really cool. Good to see you again, Veronica. Good to see you. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Adagio Tees, and to do so, we'll bring in the beloved Veronica Belmont. Hello, my name is Veronica Belmont. You may know me from such web shows as Texalon Revision 3. I have created a berry tea blend over at Adagio called Veronica's Berry Zinger. Features such flavors as berries, cream, and 60% Earl Grey, because the best way to have Earl Grey is hot. So check it out at adagio.com slash Texilla and get your can today. We've shown you pretty much everything we can. Some stuff that wasn't so new on the, on the show floor and everything new on the show floor we could find. I think my favorite products, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but I think my favorite product outside of the little tiny USB thumb drives um, probably was something wasn't I didn't even see on the show floor, which is the new Skype beta for OS X. Oh, really? Yes. I didn't see that one either. We'll talk about that next week. No, and actually, we won't talk about that next week because we'll be at CNS. Yes. We'll talk about that later. My favorite thing were the, uh, the USB-enabled Shure microphones. They're really cool. They had an all-purpose one and they had a voice optimized one. Very cool stuff, especially if you're looking to do some podcasting stuff. I don't know. Did you see the blue stereo microphone that plugs into the iPods? I did. That's I tempting. like those too. That's a lot tempting. of good stuff. But make sure you check out our CES coverage because we're going to be working our butts off to bring that to you. So in fact, right about really the sad. time you can download this will be the last of our live CES shows. You know what? Should we remind people what we like to do every week? What's that? As always, we live on your <laughs> questions. Email us, Techzilla Revision 3, product reviews, how to is when you email us, you got an idea for the tech show, we want to bring it to you. Send us an email, techzillarevision3.com. And of course, we didn't have any video questions this week, but if you want to get your mug on our show, send us a video question. No longer than 15 seconds, send us an email with the subject line, video question, and we'll take a look. You tired? I am exhausted. I took a nap on the show floor earlier, and I'm ready to go to real bed now. <laughs> I think we may need to sterilize you. The show floor was looking kind of gnarly. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. You've been watching Techzilla. We'll see you next week at CES. Kensington has some silky balls. Oh, silky. I'm sorry. He's arguing with me because I want him to have his pass out and he won't leave it out. We'll fix Three, that in a second. Two. What I have here is something that's known as an impulse buy. If you look over there, Mal's going to deny it fervently, especially since some of his beloved, you know, significant other type people, she might be watching. But he did not buy this, not because it was cheap. Not, not because it was available. Not actually, he totally bought it because he saw it and he wanted it and he had cash in his pocket. This is something to be careful of, especially on the last day of a trade show, because they tend to sell off stuff really cheap because they don't want to pay the millions of dollars to ship it back home. So now you could have got this for like 20 bucks if you just waited like two days.